What's up? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all of my highlighting tips, tricks, secrets, and more. So stay tuned. Uh salon and I am so excited to be sharing with you guys a lot of my highlighting tips and tricks and secrets and everything that you need to know about highlighting clients hair. So when it comes to highlighting I know that there can be a lot of different questions like how thick do I do the foils or sections? Do I weave? Do I slice? What if I get bleed marks? How do I mix my lightener? And so in today's video I wanted to show you on a real client how I go about doing my highlights and all the little tips and tricks along the way that will set you apart and will make your highlights look so amazing. So today I'm actually doing my mom's hair and you guys have always loved her in my videos and so I thought she was the perfect model to show you guys my tips and tricks on highlights and so let's get started. Okay, so this is our before and as you guys can see, this is just a regular root touch up. Nothing too crazy, this is definitely more of a maintenance appointment but I'm gonna show you guys some of my secret highlighting techniques and just things that will help make your life so much easier when it comes to highlighting your clients. So real quick, before we get started, I am gonna be wearing a mask today. So is my model because we're still in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. And just to be on the safe side, even though she is my mom, I just thought it would be safer. So anyways, we're gonna get started. I am going to be mixing up our lightener because this is actually one of the most important things when it comes to highlights. In fact, if you mix up your lightener wrong, either too thick or too liquidy, too runny, that can cause problems with your highlights. If it's too thick, it won't lift well enough and you won't get good saturation or good coverage. And if it's too runny, then a lot of times you can actually have your foil slip or you can get bleed marks. So I'm gonna share with you how I mix up my lightener and the consistency that I find perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna be mixing up our Wella Blondeur and I like to do a generous scoop to scoop and a half and I don't wanna mix any more than that. Sometimes if you mix too much, then what can happen is a lot of times you'll get this bowl to be swelling with your lightener or it times out by the time you use it. So I like to start with a scoop to scoop and a half. And I'm also gonna be doing 25 volume. And the way that I get 25 volume is mix equal parts, 20 volume and 30 volume with my lightener. Okay, so this would be considered too thick. You guys can see it's just kind of thick. It's really heavy. Um, and this is gonna dry out or swell up really quickly. So in my opinion, this is too thick of a consistency. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more developer. And this is just about right. You guys can see that it has a good consistency, not too thick, but also not too runny. If it's too drippy, like I said, what can happen is it can actually slip out of the foils and cause bleed marks. So we wanna make sure that our lightener is actually holding the foil. So this is a great consistency. So I'm going to add in my Olaplex and then we'll mix up our low light. Okay, and now I'm gonna mix up our low light. So I chose to do 8NN and 7GB in Goldwell, and this is gonna be equal parts of those two. And I'm gonna do 15 volume, which is equal parts, wow, that was loud, 10 volume and equal parts, 20 volume. And so we'll just kind of pump it in there. Perfect, so there's our developer, and we'll pump in the color equal parts. And we'll mix that up. Okay, so the first tip that I wanted to point out to you and show you is how close we get to the edge of the hair or to the edge of the foil with our lightener. So I'm gonna go ahead and I usually like to start applying the lightener just about half an inch to an inch down so that I can kind of place the foil and it's not gonna slip or move or anything like that. Then I wanna make sure that you do have really strong tension on this hair that you're holding and the foil is really tight. And then I start to kind of work my way up to kind of the edge of the foil. Now, 
One thing you will notice is I'm not going past that edge of the foil and in fact I'm actually leaving just a little barrier there because in case the foil starts to move or the lightener swells a little bit we don't want there to be any bleed marks. So I'm getting pretty close. I'm also really holding that tension and the foil's really taut um, but I'm not getting so close that I'm overlapping or causing anything right in there. Then we just fold this foil up and we're good to go. Now if you guys are wondering why I'm foiling backwards or why I'm doing it this way, check out my full highlighting tutorial that I've also done on my mom where you can see the full in-depth step-by-step from start to finish. That video will lay that all out there. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to point out to you as I've been doing her foils was this foil started to kind of bleed a little bit into her hair and if I just left that there, you're gonna end up with a spot and bleed mark right at the crown of her head. So one thing that I like to do is I just get a towel wet, just a little bit wet on the corner here, and I'm just gonna literally, like just tap it, tap, 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 clean that up. And even this foil is kind of torn now too, so I'm just gonna replace this entire foil. So I'm just gonna grab a new foil here, and I'm gonna place this down. Make sure to get it nice and tight in those corners. Pull that down. And then I do like to just kind of resaturate a little bit just to make sure that it, it holds in that foil really well. Um, but this is really key and really important. If you start to see foil slip or see anything where it could start to bleed, fix that because if not, you're gonna end up with a bleed mark and nobody wants that. So now we can just fold it and we can move on. All right, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a low light. Now, some of you might be wondering, when do you do a low light? How often do you do a low light? And to be honest, on most of my blonde clients or natural blonde clients, unless they wanna be platinum blonde, and even then, sometimes I still do a low light. And the reason why is it adds in that natural dimension, especially this model. My mom has some gray hair in there, so we definitely wanna make sure that we're accenting that and it doesn't just become a platinum root touch-up kind of look. So I typically do a low light every third foil on her, um, but some clients I would do it every other foil. It totally depends. But you're gonna notice that I still weave in that low light so that we still get that natural dimension coming through and it just really makes everything look beautiful. So now we're gonna go in and do a highlight right after that and it'll keep everything just with so much more dimension. Okay, so the next tip that we're gonna talk about is should I do a slice, should I do a weave, and how much hair do I leave in between each foil? Now, usually this is gonna depend on the client, but typically I don't leave a lot of hair out in between the foils. Now, some methods are taught where you foil back to back and you just weave things out. I like to leave a section out because I do want there to be a natural uh, grow out and you'll even see here. Yes, yeah, she's got a line of her roots right here, but it's actually not that bad. And it's because we leave her natural out so that it's not just a solid line of regrowth. I do like to leave a little hair out. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a weave. Now you can see from my previous section that I've done a weave before. And I'm actually not a fan of the picking up the exact same pieces you picked up before. Um, I personally like to just go in and weave very naturally, um, whether or not I picked up those pieces before because I think that it ends up with a more natural result and it doesn't end up with such a line. So I'm gonna go in and you're gonna see that there are some low lights of her natural color that have just kind of grown out in there. So we'll go through, we'll kind of just feather those out right in there. Try not to overlap too much, right? But just going in and just tapping that in there. So that's gonna be a weave section. Now on her, I actually do like to do slices and slices aren't necessarily that bad. So here's my section that I'm gonna leave out, not super thick, and I'm gonna go in and slice right here. Now when I slice, you're gonna see me do more of a baby light slice. This is not a chunky thick slice, um, especially when it comes to the front of her hairline, but I sometimes do want there to be a little bit more of a bright blonde piece. So I will sometimes slice it in there. Sometimes I'll even do two foils back to back and I know that that might feel like you're gonna get this chunky, chunky highlight, but in reality, it actually can look really nice, especially when you're doing more thin sections. So this is just something to test out, to play around with, and it's something to not be afraid of testing out different types of sections, different weaves, different slices, and just experimenting a little bit. All right, so now let's talk about the hairline. So a lot of clients have these little baby hairs or new growth in their hairline, especially any women that have maybe been pregnant recently. New growth and you know these baby hairs are totally normal, but we don't wanna ignore them and we don't wanna leave them out. So when it comes to the hairline, I really like to go in with baby fine sections. So first gonna take my slice and then I'm gonna weave it. I typically never do slices around the hairline, just because it grows out so strongly. So we're gonna go in and you can see she doesn't have a ton of regrowth here because we always make sure to get that hairline in there. 
I'll probably do two more foils here. Now, sometimes what I like to do is I actually like to tear foils in half, so I'm working with more like baby foils, but it's fine for her. It's, it's okay, we don't need to do that, but um, sometimes that makes it a little bit easier if your foils feel like they're slipping or if you're having a hard time with getting these larger foils in there. Do one last little baby foil right here, and I'm actually gonna foil this one down. Can I get it in there? And every client's hairline is very different, so you have to treat them very, you know, uniquely. It's you're customizing a hairline, and truly this is gonna be one thing that sets you apart from other stylists in your area or in your salon. So we're gonna fold this one just to make sure it doesn't slip. Pack it in there nice and tightly and then we'll fold him up. Okay, and the next little section for her hairline is these little baby hairs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of barely pick them up here. And I did decide to get some small baby foil. So again, this is just a foil torn in half. Just makes it easier and that way we're not having to fold the foil 500 times. Now with her, she does have some gray right around her hairline. And so the reason why we like to do these highlights right here is it helps her natural hair grow out really beautifully. So this is something that's really cool. You're really able to customize these little foils right around the hairline to your client, to their natural growth, and just making it look so beautiful when it grows out. So I'm gonna do a couple of these and then we're gonna do right around her face. So I made sure to grab all her little baby hairs and got it around her mask right here. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tackle this little front hairline section. And again, we're still continuing with those baby lights. So got my section always going to weave right here. And some clients have funky hairlines, so you have to add in some different foils. Sometimes it requires a different pattern. This is my traditional pattern. It always works well on her, um, but sometimes you do have to change it up a little bit and add in a couple more foils or just, you know, kind of adjust. So just gonna feather that in right there. And I always like to do on the hairline, typically two highlights and then one low light. And that low light behind the highlight really acts as contrast to help those highlights pop just that much more. So always do two highlights, then occasionally one low light. Sometimes I'll do three. Again, it just really depends on the client and the look that they're going for. Okay, so the last little foiling tip that I wanna give you guys is all about saturation. So I know sometimes it's easy to just get foiling away, especially when you get to one of these last sections and maybe you don't saturate everything all the way or you saturate too much. And so it's really important to make sure that you're fully saturating the section that you're working on. And you'll even see like right here, there's a little tiny bit of her natural low light. Make sure that that's saturated, even right here. Otherwise, you're gonna have these spots and holes all around the hair, and as it starts to grow out in these ends, there's gonna be some like funky lines going on. So you just wanna make sure that you're saturating and making sure to fully get all that product in so that things aren't A, slipping, but also not causing weird spots. And the same thing goes for a low light as well. Not just with lightener, you wanna make sure that you're fully saturating with the low light, especially these ends, making sure that you're not just like leaving them out or leaving spots uncovered so kind of rolling those guys back up in there um, obviously this is easier to do on shorter hair but when you're on longer hair you want to make sure that you're also fully saturating those ends as we finish up this last little section here the last tip and I know I said that last time but the last tip that I wanted to share with you guys is all about your brushes I personally love these Framar brushes this is their small brush and this one actually has a little tail comb on it but I just love it because it has flexibility in the bristles it allows me to kind of sweep the lightener on if I need to um, and it really allows me just to saturate the hair well so brushes make a huge difference and if you're struggling with placing your foils with placing your lightener with not getting close enough or getting too close or having bleed marks it could come down to your brushes so check out those brushes I am not sponsored by them I just love them that much that I talk about them in every single video so check them out I also have it linked in my description box below Okay, so now that I finished her partial highlight, one of the biggest questions that I always get, and maybe something that you've been wondering is, okay, how long do I let my clients 
process for. So every client is gonna be different. Every situation is gonna be different. And some clients only need to process for 10, 15 minutes, while other clients have to process for sometimes 50 minutes to an hour. So everything's different, especially different techniques that we're doing. But typically with a highlight client, especially with somebody who has blonde hair or naturally kind of lighter hair in general, they're usually gonna process anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. Now her, because we took a little bit longer today because we were filming, she only has about 10 more minutes to process and then we're gonna rinse her out. But sometimes I'll let her sit a little bit longer. We also did 25 volumes. So if you started with a lower developer, they're gonna be processing longer versus if you worked your way up to a higher developer. So obviously there's so many different variables and that's why if somebody tells you that the processing time is 20 minutes or 30 minutes, it's really hard to say. There's so many different variables with the client's hair, the porosity, all sorts of things. So we're gonna let her process and then I'm gonna show you right before we rinse her what her foils look like so you know what they should be lifting to. Okay, so she's been processing for about 15 minutes and she is ready to go, but I wanted to show you what the inside of her foil looks like. So you guys can see there's still a little bit of light yellow, the inside of a banana. That is the perfect color that we're going for. We never wanna lift her to white white, even though she likes to be pretty bright blonde. Um, she's a natural blonde and so this is the perfect tone. This is exactly where she needs to be lifted to um, otherwise we could over lift her and cause damage so this is perfect um, the rest of her foils look good so we're gonna go rinse her all right so here's our little baby foil as you can see so beautiful here's our two other little ones they're just so soft and so subtle and it's really gonna make such a difference. See those little tiny baby lights, almost people call them glimmer lights. They definitely look like a little glimmer. So um, again, this is something that absolutely will help you stand out from other stylists, that beautiful hairline detail. All right, so we pulled out all of her foils and fortunately for us, she does not need a toner or a root shadow or anything. So I'm just shampooing her like normal. We're gonna do Olaplex number two, a regular conditioner, and then we'll be ready to finish her up. All right, and here is our final result. You can see all of the highlights look so blended. Everything looks so beautiful. There's no chunky pieces and yet we still have so much dimension. So I hope that this video was helpful for you and I hope that you're ready to try out some of these tips and tricks. That is a wrap for today's video and I hope that you learned maybe even just one tip or trick and something new about highlighting clients' hair. I think that this kind of video is something that you can come back to over and over again, whether you're in cosmetology school, you're just starting out as a stylist, or you've been doing hair for 20 years. There's always little things that we can pick up from watching other artists. So before I sign off, one thing I just wanna say is if you enjoyed watching this video, go ahead and do me a favor. Go ahead and take a screenshot or photo of you watching this video and post it on your Instagram stories, tagging me, I'll leave my Instagram handle down below so that I can see you watching all of my videos and I can cheer you along your journey as well. And if you haven't already, come on over to Instagram and send me a DM. Go ahead and do that too. I love getting to connect and chat with you and I truly just love seeing everybody who's watching my videos. So please come on over and say hi there. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And one more little favor that I'm gonna ask for you. If you are watching up until this point in the video, that means that you go above and beyond and truly you're somebody who cares about their career as a stylist. And so what I want you to do is I want you to comment down below that you watch the video up until the end. And that way I know that you are one of my awesome people who are always watching and somebody who's really going above and beyond. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.